Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, August 28, 2022. I am Reverend Mary Tillman, Associate Minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. The summer quarter study is Partners in a New Creation. Unit 3, our theme, The Great Hope of the Saints. This is lesson number 4, the last lesson in Unit 3. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is Come and Enjoy. And in the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is No Substitute. Devotional reading, Psalm 119, verses 97 through 104. Our background scripture, Revelation, chapter 22, verses 8 through 21. And the print text, Revelation 22, verses 10 through 21. Our key verses are Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. From the NIV Bible, it reads, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this scroll. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our minds so that we may learn and understand the benefit of living a godly life as John the Revelator describes our eternal home with you, the new heaven and the new earth. Father God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. The Lesson Introduction This is the last lesson in Unit 3 entitled, No Substitute. The lessons of this summer's quarter were taken from the books of Isaiah, the Gospel of John, and the Book of Revelation. Unit 3 is entitled, The Great Hope of the Saints, and was a four-lesson study of the last two chapters of the Book of Revelation. These lessons help learners envision the new home and city God has prepared for the redeemed. In this new heavenly environment, the saints will enjoy the new water of eternal life. The lesson titles were themselves very inspirational. No more tears, no place like it, no better refreshment, and today's lesson title, No Substitute. I don't know about you, but it sounds like a place I want to be. Please get your Sunday school book, your Bible, pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this wonderful lesson. Let's get started. Again, the title of our lesson is No Substitute. Three questions for you to consider as always. Question number one. What was John instructed to do after his vision was over? Question number two. What is the meaning of the phrase, who washed their robes in this lesson? And question number three. What are the dangers in falsely tampering with God's word? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. This week, we're in the final chapter of the book of Revelation, the last chapter in the Holy Bible. The author of the book of Revelation is Jesus Christ, recorded by the Apostle John. The Apostle John wrote the book of Revelation while he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. He was sent there by Roman authorities during a period when Christians were victims of severe persecution. While on the Isle of Patmos, John witnessed a spectacular vision of the glorified Christ where God revealed to him what would take place in the future. In this vision, John is shown the new heaven and the new earth, the new Jerusalem, and describes the perfect life awaiting the redeemed. The Garden of Eden, the original paradise, the intended home of God's people, was lost because of Adam and Eve's sin. You remember they were 
uh, put out of the Garden of Eden. It is regained and will be eternally accessible to all the saints of the ages in the new heaven and the new earth. John recorded the details of his vision in a style called apocalyptic literature, which is literature that reveals hidden things and where symbolic imagery is used. In the book of Revelation, it is Jesus Christ unveiling himself. The word revelation means to unveil, uncover, and reveal. Last week's lesson continued John's description of the heavenly city, the New Jerusalem, God's permanent dwelling place among his people. Beginning with Revelation 22, verses 6 through 21, the focus of the book of Revelation turns from the content of what John has seen and heard concerning the New Jerusalem to what he has written and communicated to others. The passage repeatedly emphasizes that Jesus is coming soon. This is a major emphasis in this text. Christ warns that the climax of all things is his imminent return would soon come. In chapter 22, John is giving words of hope and warning to his listeners as they are interwoven with repeated promises and warnings throughout this chapter. Warnings to those who tamper with these words and to those who fail to heed the call to repentance and words of promises and hope to those who keep the words that John has written and to those who accept the invitation of the free offer of life. The book of Revelation ends with these three. Number one, a final invitation to all to come to Christ for salvation. Number two, a description of of contrasting destinies for the saved and unsaved. And number three, a warning against tampering with the words of this prophecy. This week's lesson aims are survey the biblical references to the second coming in order to see the importance of this hoped-for reality. Rejoice that the invitation from Jesus to be a part of the new creation continues through the end of all things and to embrace the call to become part of God's kingdom. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is Judgment and Reward, Revelation 22, verses 10 through 13. The second outline is Blessing and Judgment, Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 through 16. And the third outline is A Final Invitation and Warning, Revelation 22, verses 17 through 21. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, Judgment and Reward. But before we do that, let's go back and read verses 8 and 9, chapter 22. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. The angel had showed John the magnificent holy city. John appeared to be so overwhelmed by the whole experience that he began to worship the angel. John makes the mistake here of worshiping the angel rather than worshiping God. He's corrected by the angel. Here the angel rebukes John and tells him to worship God only. God alone is worthy of our worship and adoration. And now we pick up today's lesson starting with verse number 10. Verse 10 reads, Then he told me, this is the, what the angel told him, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this scroll, because the time is near. Verse 11, let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. 
Verse number 12. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Verse 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Key point number one. The angel told John what to do after his vision is over. John was instructed not to seal the scroll because the time is drawing near and it needed to be read. The words in verses 10 and 11 explains that there will be those who are wicked and those who do right and those who are holy. The angel said, let each of these persons continue in whatever way they are living. Key point number two. The narrative changes in verses 12 and 13 from the angel speaking to John to the voice of Jesus. Jesus says to John, look, I am coming soon and my reward is with me. Jesus himself will recompense every person according to his or her works. There will not be any time for the non-believer to establish a relationship with him. That is why it is important, my brothers and sisters, that we do our utmost to introduce everybody to Jesus Christ. We must be born again if we expect to spend eternity with Christ. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. When he speaks, it is yes and amen. History from the biblical perspective has a meaningful beginning because of Christ, and through him, it will have a meaningful conclusion. Long after nations and empires lay buried in the graveyards of history, Christ will reign. Long after time runs out, Christ shall reign, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Outline number two, Blessing and Judgment. And we find this in Revelation 22, verses 14 through 16, and it reads, Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Verse 15, Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Key point number one. Verse 14. This is the last of the seven references to the blessed. The blood of Christ is the detergent that launders those robes to be dazzling clean. Those who wash their robes will have the benefit of being in the eternal presence of God around his throne. You know, we sing that song somewhere around the throne. That's where I want to be. They have also earned the right to the tree of life and are permitted to enter the city by the gates. We know there are 12 gates in the east, 12 gates in the west, 12 gates in the north and 12 gates in the south. It doesn't matter which direction you come in, there are gates for every saint to enter. However, on the other hand, those who reject the prophecy will not reign with him. There will be non-believers when Jesus returns, but they will not be able to enter the holy city. Only the righteous shall see God. This reminds me of the song, 12 Gates to the City, Hallelujah. 12 gates in the city, 24 elders in the city, 48 angels in the city, waiting for me in the city. Shout hallelujah in the city. There's a great, big, beautiful city. Hallelujah. Do you remember that song? We used to really sing that in the choir back in the day. Now let's move on to key point number two. I'm getting excited. Verse 16, Jesus makes it explicitly clear that he sent the angel to John for the revelation. The angel is the messenger that articulates Christ's words. The things revealed to John through the angel were intended to be Christ's testimony for the seven churches in Asia Minor of John's day. And you know what? They are still relevant for the church of today. 
Outline number three, a final invitation and warning, Revelation 22, verses 17 through 21. And it reads from verse 17, the spirit and the bride say, come and let the one who hears say, come, let the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. Verse 19, and if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this scroll. Verse 20, he who testifies to these things says, quote, Yes, I am coming soon. End quote. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Verse 21 The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Key point number one Verse 17 is the final invitation from the Spirit and the Bride inviting non believers for the last time to become witnessing believers so they too may enter. It is important, my brothers and sisters, for us to spread the love of Jesus everywhere we go. It is our responsibility to bid them to come and get to know Christ. Not only should we ask it by, invite them by asking, but we should invite them by the lifestyle that we live. Key point number two. Verse 18 is the warning do not add or take away any of the words of this prophecy. We just read where he said, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anybody adds to any anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from the prophecy, God will take away that from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in the scroll. We don't want to be found guilty of tampering with the word of God. There are consequences for tampering with the inspired word of God. We must read it. We must study it. We must believe it. And most of all, we must live it as it is written. There is no substitute for living, believing, and trusting God's word. The book of Revelation closes with Christ's benediction. Yes, I am coming quickly. End quote. You and I both know, no one knows the day or the hour when Jesus will return. But we believe that one day he is coming, just as he said, because he is the great hope of all the saints. John concludes this prophetic letter with this benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Now, I just want you to reflect on some of the songs. This lesson brought to mind so many songs down through the years, but I just want to point out a few. One of them was the Nightingale singing, There's Going to Be a Meeting. And then they also said, I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting when all the saints get home. After separating the right from the wrong, I want to be at the meeting around the throne. Then Dottie Peoples recorded a couple of songs that fit this lesson. She said, number one, get your house in order. And the other song that I loved by her was, I want to be ready when Jesus come. The Chicago Mass Choir recorded, I hope we'll all be ready when Jesus comes. The Jackson Southern Airs recorded, No Tears in Heaven. Douglas Miller recorded a song that everybody loves to hear, When I See Jesus, When I See Jesus, Amen. I'm sure you can think of your favorite song about heaven. How about Swing Low Sweet Chariot, Coming For To Carry Me Home, or Shirley Caesar's Sweeping Through the City. There are so many songs about heaven, but I just want to remind you that there is no substitute 
for that place called heaven. Let's look at our outline and summary. I am so excited about this lesson, I can hardly contain myself. Today's lesson passage emphasizes that God's promises are trustworthy and true, and that he will fulfill them. This principle concerning God's promises gives hope to all who are waiting on his promises in their individual lives. But it also speaks to something much larger. God's entire purpose in redemptive history. We may not live to see every fulfillment, even of what God has called us to do in this life. Biblical figures like Jeremiah and Paul did not, but God ultimately fulfills his word nevertheless. Holding fast to God's promises empowers us to remain faithful in the present task he has given to us to accomplish as we bear in mind their ultimate eternal significance. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson as much as I have enjoyed bringing it to you. God bless you. God bless us all. Let us pray. Father God, we await with great expectation that day when our eyes shall behold you face to face in all of your glory. Help us to live so that we may be included among your obedient ones who hear and respond positively to your second coming to both judge and bless the world. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.